In this video, I'm going to be making some bannock, but I'm going to be using pine pollen and pine cones. If you're interested in seeing how that's done, keep watching. All right, in spite of the lead in talking about using pine cones, uh, I'm not using this type of pine cone. I will be using a pine cone, which I'll show to you in a minute, but this is the female pine cone of the Eastern white pine with the seeds already dropped out of it. We don't have any pine cones big enough in Nova Scotia that I can harvest the seeds out of and grind them up for powder. There are trees in other provinces and states towards the west that do, but not in Nova Scotia. But there is a pine cone that grows on the white pine, the red pine, and the jack pine that I can use in baking. So let me take you down to the table where I am going to be working my bannock together and then baking it over my stove. So the process for making bannock using pine pollen and pine cones is actually very simple. Now the whole bannock is not made from the pine cones and the pine pollen. It's made starting using a bannock mix. Uh, this is my ketogenic bannock mix, which is predominantly almond flour, but any bannock mix can use, any tea biscuit mix can be used for that matter. But this is the one I use, so all the ingredients, the baking powder, the salt, and everything else is already in here. So that'll be the foundation for the bannock but I will be using some previously collected pine pollen that I have in this little container and these are the pine cones that I'm talking about so these are the male pollen cones these are the ones that as they grow will eventually release all that fine white or sorry not white yellow powder into the air that floats through everywhere and gets on cars and everything else in the city and these are the pollen cones from a red pine that I collected not far from here our white pine are not quite ready at that stage, but uh, I'll show you some of this in a little bit more detail. I'm not going to talk about the benefits of using pine pollen and pollen cones in my bannock because I have a rather lengthy video talking about how to harvest, process, collect the nutritional value and the medicinal value of pine pollen so what I'll do is I'll link to that video at the end of this one if you want to get a in more more in-depth discussion on pine pollen what I will tell you about it is there are a whole range of health benefits uh, coming from pine pollen itself it's been known for many many years around the world and it is one of the highest levels of a complete protein from any vegetable source that you can get period. So just those two things alone, adding them into the bannock, plus it tastes great. It's not a strong flavor, but it does taste great. So let me show you how I'm going to go about this. So uh, let's start with the bannock powder, put the bannock powder into my bowl. Now I'm not, like I said, I'm not going to talk a lot about the bannock itself. It is well, when you're using almond flour, it's not quite as the same as using a traditional white wheat flour. It uh, doesn't hold together quite the same, so you need some other ingredients. Normally, I would add an egg in here and, but I, and an oil. Well, I will be adding an oil, and the oil today is something different. Quite often, I use olive oil or ghee, clarified butter, but today I'm going to be using some coconut oil, and it's the solid form, but I just heated it up a little bit to see if I can get it into a liquid form. So... Like I said, all my other ingredients for the bannock, that's a standalone bannock mix right there. But to that, I'm going to be adding my pine pollen. How much? Well, this is about two tablespoons, but I don't think that's relative. If you've got a good, robust bannock, uh, it'll work out just fine itself. And pollen cones. I don't know that I'll add all of these, so let me see if I can give you a little closer look, up, look at on this. This is a pollen cone, and these will continue these to enlarge to the point where they release their pollen. They look like berries. They're just like little berries. In fact, if I give it a little twist, they come off like little berries. I mean, you can pop these right in your mouth. I do all the time going along the trail. And uh, they're juicy with a slight powdery texture to them in, in your mouth. Uh, it looks like there's bran on the outside. That's all good. It doesn't, you know, so this is, the pine pollen is inside of these. As I say, there's the center core I'll toss away. And I'm going to do, well, maybe I'll see how many I can get in here without getting too many. So I'm going to mix these two together. And when I've done that, I'll come back and we'll go on to the next stage. Okay, so I just cut away long enough to take all the little pollen berries, I guess they might call them, off of the pollen cones and put them into the bannock mix. Now, I'm just going to kind of distribute them around. 
they they are juicy just like a berry so they're going to add some moisture as well as texture and flavor and nutrition to what i've got here all right now i hope i've got enough olive oil here or coconut oil here probably two tablespoons preciseness isn't all that important because it didn't all quite mix through but it will and like with any other bannock just mix your oil through so do you really need an oil in a bannock? Uh, no, you don't. Actually, you can get by with just flour and water if you want to try that for a dry, simple bannock. But flour and a little bit of baking powder will really make a difference in terms of the texture of the bannock. And then if you're looking for something that holds together and has more flavor and moistness to it, that's when you add some fat of some type, olive oil, butter, ghee, coconut oil as I mentioned. Now, that's pretty close, just the way it is, but I do have to add a little bit of water. I'm just looking to make a something I can pick up in my hands. Hmm. You could add some sweetener to this. Uh, for this one, I'm not. There are other ones I will add. Always, when you're making bannock, that's not much. That's no more than a tablespoon I just added. I may have to add more. But if you add too much, it's hard to take it out. In fact, that is enough. That was very much enough. Okay, so what I have found working with almond flour and the mixture here, if you let it set for a minute, it really starts to absorb any moisture. As you can see, it's doing now. It's really starting to thicken up. So I'm just going to leave that set for a second before I form it into the bannock, and I'm going to get my cooking vessel ready, and I'll show you that. So today, you'll see in a minute, I'll be using the Bushcraft Essentials Bushbox Excellent Titanium as my uh, stove that I'm working with, and again with charcoal, because yes, again, we are under a fire ban here in Nova Scotia. Warm, actually hot days, dry air and lots of wind. Yeah, it's just, I can't risk a fire, so that's all right. Charcoal is a great great cooking medium for this type of thing. So I am going to be using the Pathfinder bush pot as my cooking vessel. A little bit of water left in it from having my tea. And really, unlike what I've done in the past where I've used my 12 centimeter zebra and dropped my, my bannock or what it was I'm making in on top of my spacer, this time I am going to be turning it on its side. And because I do have, it's not the best, but it does work, a friction fit lid which will stay shut and hold the heat in. But again, you still need a spacer. The spacer is the universal grate or grill from Bushcraft Essentials. So that's where I'm gonna put the bannock inside and put it back on top. So let's form up the bannock. I'll put it on this, put it in my pot, and then uh, we'll get it into the stove. I have pine needles falling in. How uh, appropriate is that? Okay, let's see. Will this hold together? Yeah, it's holding together. See if I can get all of it into the bannock. There's a lot of the little pine pollen cone berries in this, and they're not all holding together or staying in it. That's all right. What doesn't go in, I could just pick up and eat if I want to. All right, so there is my bannock formed. Get it down a little flatter. It'll cook a little quicker. The other thing, even with the amount of baking powder in here, I find it doesn't always rise as much as it could. And it looks like I may have a bit too much coconut oil in there. Oh well. Again, not an issue. It will still work. Put that inside. Put the lid on. And I'll reposition the camera and we'll go over to the stove. Right. Charcoal is well engaged. Hopefully it will last. I'm sure it will last. You can see I've got the Bushbox XL set up. I have trivets on the outside facing front to back set in, a, in their higher position and they're there just to stabilize the pot once it lays on top like this. I want to make sure that the pot's not going to roll off and it's not. Great. That's it. That's all I have to do. Now I'll check back in 10 maybe 15 minutes. We'll do a doneness test with a uh, toothpick of some type. See whatever's on the outside of the pot is starting to burn off a little bit and it tells me just how warm the, the oven is but that's all there is to it at this point now is just to wait a little while until that's done. Okay it's been a full 20 minutes. I left it 20 minutes because I, I don't think there was 
quite the amount of heat that I would have liked to have had in the stove. It's, it's starting to die down. I added a few pieces of briquettes, which means I have to allow them to reheat up to come back up to heat where I want it. But let's see if it's ready now. I'm also thinking that I may have put in too much coconut oil, which has made it a little greasy, meaning it's going to take a little longer to cook. But let's take a look. Oh, it certainly smells. Oh, you know what? I think we are done. But uh, before I take that all the way out, I'm going, to, I'm going to give it a test. I'm using a small branch off of a pine tree as a toothpick, and that seemed appropriate. And it came out dry, meaning, yes, it is done. So now all I have to do is take it out, set it down, and leave it for a few minutes to cool off a tiny bit, firm up a little bit, and uh, then we'll take a look and see how it turned out. All right, well, this looks pretty good. I am going to see if I can't focus the camera down on the bannock so you can see what it looks like, and then we'll break it open. We'll give it a taste test. All right. There's always a little bit of a trial and error to find where the focus is on the camera. So, still quite soft. It did not brown a lot on the top, but we'll talk about that in a second. All right, let's give this a taste test and see how it turned open. I guess I better tilt it up a bit more than that. Yeah, that looks better. All right, so. Definitely done. Smells good. Okay, what a wonderful texture. I know I've done this before. This is obviously not the first time I've done this. I had not put that many of the berries in as well as the pine pollen itself. And I was a little concerned that the berries would cause it to not hold together the way I wanted it to. There's another reason for that I'll mention in a second, but it did. It held together very well. I also wondered at 20 minutes if it was going to be dry. It's anything but dry, and I suspect that has a lot to do with the coconut oil that I mixed through. So why didn't it rise more than that? And that has a lot to do with the almond flour and the pine pollen mixed together. So Almond flour has no gluten in it, not like a white wheat flour has, so it doesn't form the gluten bonds that quite are, are associated with a yeast bread and even a good bannock or tea biscuit that allow it to be light and fluffy. You need to add something in it to replace that gluten. Now, I, I add a little bit of uh, psyllium husk into mine, and uh, usually an egg, and there's no egg in this. And those two things together usually help to keep the bannock together and allow it to rise a little bit more. When you add the pine pollen, of course, there's no gluten in that. It's just going to make that much more, less likely to rise. Having said that, it turned out wonderful. Now, the other thing is, I mentioned it didn't brown on top. It did a little, not much. And the reason is, and you saw my setup using the bush pot sideways on top of the Bushcraft Essentials Bushbox XL, the reason uh, it didn't brown as I didn't add any coals to the top uh, or the top side of the pot where the, where the handles were. If I had done that, then uh, I may have gotten some browning on the top half of the bannock. Truth is, it's going to cook anyway. It may take a little longer. It may not brown on top the same way if I had, as if I had done that. But it's awkward doing that. If you have a setup like you might with your firebox with the rect or square a uh, railing, a uh, piece of wire that you can hook into the side of a, a zebra belly can, then you can support some hot coals. I have done this before where I've used the handles on the bush pot to support a few hot coals. I just didn't bother. It's more, just wasn't the effort for it. But that is wonderful. There is a flavor over and above what's in the bannock, but it's not a strong flavor. It's not like, oh my God, pine. Yeah, it's not gonna taste good at all. No, not at all. It, there is a flavor, but not a strong one. What's interesting, I have no sweetener, no sugar, no artificial sweetener, or natural sweetener, low calorie sweetener in this at all. Whether it's the almond flour, the uh, coconut oil, or the pine, and I like to think it's the pine. There's a sweetness to this that is present that I didn't expect. 
Anyway, this is great. Uh, I'm going to cook the rest of my lunch now, so I'll, let me know if you have, are going to try this or if you have tried this. Let me know if you have any variations to this recipe you'd like to share with me and with everybody else. Let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see me cooking while I'm out here. Something different or whatever. Well, whatever it is, we'll have a look at it and see if I can't find a recipe for it that I can use in the woods. But get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.